So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with the control panel. This is kind of your <coughs> main controls for the unit. Um, in this unit what we have is your first button here is for the slide out room which is for the couch and dinette here. Um, after you have it all leveled and set up um, your jacks down <coughs> all you have to do is push the button and hold it to slide it out the unit will slide all the way out until it stops. When it stops just go ahead and let go. That's all you have to do. Um, the next thing we're going to worry about is your awning. Um, power awnings are really nice but they're really chintzy. Uh, you just got to make sure you're aware that if it starts getting a little bit windy outside, put it away. If you're going to leave the campsite, put it away. Um, and all you have to do with this function, it's kind of windy outside, so I'll do another video on just the awning function. Um, but all you have to do for the awning is push and hold the extend button. And what the awning will do is it'll come all the way out until there's a valence that'll fall at like a 90 degree angles. When it hits that valence, just go ahead and let it go and you're good to go. When you're ready to come back in with the awning, just push the retract button until it comes all the way in, and then when it stops, you're good to go. Um, this is for your water pump. This is like a well pump out in the country. It gets the water pressure from uh, <coughs> the water tank to up top. You can leave this water pump on all the time. You don't have to turn it off. Your next button is your water heater. For this unit, this is the gas that turns the gas water heater side on. This water heater also has an electric side, um, but you turn the electric on inside the water heater door itself. So all you want to do is leave this one on also. The light will be on and it's good to go. You can leave that on all the time. Your next button is your living room lights, which turn on sometimes two lights, sometimes four lights. It's different for each unit. Um, your next light is a porch light, which on this unit it's just a little round yellow light, not very bright. Um, your next button here is your awning light. There's a string light of LEDs all the way the length of the awning. That's what most people use is the awning light here. Um, next is your monitor panel. Shows you how low everything is or how full everything is. So if this bottom light is on, it's either empty or very low. When this top light is on, it's full. So what I'll do is if your unit's plugged in to shore power, which it is, um, and you push the battery, it's going to say it's full. Um, the way you check your battery is you unplug it from shore power and then come and check it and that'll tell you how big it is. Um, your next tank is your black, which is your toilet. Um, all you have to do is push the black button and right now it's empty. Now it says gray one and gray two. Um, usually your sinks and your showers are on different one. Um, so it, it all varies on your unit. Uh, this unit, I, I believe gray one, we'll push gray one, and that's your kitchen. So it's empty, your tank is empty. Gray two is your bathroom, so you'll push it. That's empty too. Um, your fresh water is your onboard water supply. The amount of water you have available. Usually not very much, it's only like 40 gallons of water. You push, hold it, that's empty too. Um, a lot of times the black especially they'll read wrong you'll just let's say you just dumped your tank you got to the site you're all ready to go and you push it it'll say that it's full but you knew you just emptied it um, there's sensors inside those tanks that get dirty it's a common problem with these um, as long as you knew that you dumped the tank that's about all you need to really worry about um, the next thing we'll worry about here is your dinette uh, quite a bit of seating on these newer units and these also convert to beds and all you have to do to convert this unit is there's two poles there's one here and one there you lift the tabletop straight up and it'll release the these bars just sit inside of that joint right there when you lift them up they'll pull out pull both those poles out set them on the ground and then this table will sit on these runners right here and then all these cushions for the dinette will slide in and then you'll have your bed. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but if you need more sleeping area, it's great to have. Next thing is your sink, really basic operation. If I don't have any water, it's still winterized, but you pull it down right to cold, left to hot, turn it back off. Um, 
these faucets are pretty chintzy, not like your house. So if you got kids, just make sure they're not pulling on them or anything. They break really easy. Your next option um, is your microwave. Just like a house microwave. Pretty simple, um, basic operation. It's good for popcorn and stuff. Now, over your stove, you have a fan, which when you're cooking, you want that fan up. On. it'll suck the uh, heat and moisture out and outside now outside there's a vent for this fan you have to make sure that vent is open um, the next thing you have is 12 volt light you just push it to turn it on turn it off now this unit has a really nice uh, glass plate on it um, all you have to do is lift it up and it'll fold and then just fold it all the way back and your stove is good to go. Now all you have to do is turn it to light. On this unit, you have an igniter. You have the back corner uh, burner. You have the front burner and you have the back right burner. The next one is for your oven operation. So all you have to do is turn this to high and then go ahead and flick that igniter and it'll go ahead and take off. Um, if your igniter stops working, you can just take a lighter and kind of stick it on there when it's on high and light it like that. Super easy. Um, one feature I do like about this oven is usually in the back there is a uh, igniter right here. Um, but a lot of units you have to light the pilot light just with a uh, lighter. This unit actually you can light it with the igniter on the stove so you just keep turning that sometimes it'll take a while to light but it will light it just takes a while um, but you have to push the button in to get it to go so that's all you have to do for that and then another nice feature of this oven is it's got kind of a night light so you can turn it on and it'll just a little night light here you have some storage, some drawers, and some cabinets. Next is your fridge. Um, the fridges in this unit is 12 volt, which I'm not familiar with. Usually I got three-way fridges in all of my fridges. Um, so this is new to me. Um, it seems pretty nice from what I've been told. Um, on the back there, it's got your temperature gauge for the freezer. It's too cold, just turn it to the left. It's too warm, turn it more to the right. Up here is your fridge controls. All you have to do is, uh, if you need it colder, click it, the set button, it'll go colder. Click it, set button a couple more. Uh, one is lowest, five is coldest. Um, it's got a lot of room though, I kinda like that. Um, some of the models, the 12 volt, you can't turn them off. If the coach is plugged in, they're running. Luckily, this manufacturer put an on and off switch which is right next to the cooktop. Um, make sure that's always on. If you open the fridge and the light's not on, check the switch to make sure that it didn't get bumped to the off position. Um, I'm going to do another video. I have another unit that doesn't have an on and off switch so we're going to go ahead and upgrade that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, next is our little jackknife couch. Kids love these things. Um, all you got to do to lift it up is you'll lift up the bottom a little bit so that it kind of turns to a 45 and then it'll pull out and drop so I'll pull it out to 45 and drop it and there's your bed that's all you got to do um, and then to put it back you pick this bottom part up here up to about a 45 and then push it back into itself and you're good to go super easy um, underneath this coach you have storage you open that up you got a ton of storage under there. I bet you the kids will play under there also. Our next feature is your entertainment system. You have a TV, a radio. Uh, I believe this one has a CD player too, so you can play movies on the TV. I'm gonna check that out later. Um, it's got a ton of storage on each side. Storage is a big thing for campers. Sometimes you don't have any storage. Um, the bunks in this unit, they're called double bunks, so you can actually get two kids on top of there. Um, the weight capacity of these bunks, 200 pounds, what I was told. So make sure you're under 200 pounds on the top bunk, 
the bottom bunk's usually better, but they're rated at 200. Um, in this coach, they're starting to do it a lot. They're putting USB uh, plugs in all of the areas. So everything's got USBs now, so they're kind of upgrading these. Um, the lights on these are different also. The on and off switch for these lights is in the middle. You push the middle button and the light will come on. The old style, it had like two balls on each side and a slider. This one's just, you know, it, it looks nicer. So you just push that on. Um, the next thing we have here is our heat and cool controls. So what you have is you have your cool, which is your AC, your fan, which just circulates the ambient air inside. Um, off turns everything off and your heat is your furnace. Um, over here you have auto. When you're running your air conditioner or your furnace, you want the fan in automatic, high or low. If you have it on on, on high or low, the heat or the air will never turn off. It'll just keep circulating. So you want to have it on auto and that'll keep the temperature. When it hits temperature, it'll shut off. When it gets too hot or too cold, it'll turn back on. And then all you do is slide this back and forth to select your temperature that you need. Super easy. Next is the bathroom. Um, not a bad sized bathroom for a camper. Not a big bathroom. But our units, we always try to get the um, sun shower in the, the roof panel. Um, skylight, so you get more room, headroom when you're taking a shower. It kind of makes it nice. Um, if you're not hooked to full hookup, I wouldn't recommend using the shower. You're going to deplete your water supply super fast. Um, we can come out and fill it and empty your water, but there's an added cost to that. Um, the next thing we have is your toilet. On this toilet, it's got a little hand flush in the back part. Um, all you do is when you're done going to the bathroom, you just pull it all the way towards you, it'll flush. Now if you're using it and you want more water, like there's not enough water in the bowl, you pull this handle ever so slightly back to you and it'll fill with water. So you can add more water if you need to. Um, so that's here with that. Um, toilet paper, I would recommend just getting RV toilet paper. Um, <clears throat> it breaks up a lot better in the tanks because it's not sitting in there very long. Um, what we always do is we just go to the dollar store and buy the cheapest one ply toilet paper you do. Don't go get Charmin or anything. Um, <clears throat> you always want one ply. When you flush stuff down the toilet, do not flush any wipes or cleaning uh, towels or anything down there. Just one ply toilet paper and your bodily waste. I, a lot of people, I've had a lot of clogs um, in customer units. It's not a fun job getting the clog out. And a lot of times it's from flushing things down toilet that should not be flushed. So we'll walk back to the unit. So we covered the fridge, covered the entertainment system, the stove, the microwave, the sink. Um, the next thing is the bed. Um, you have a little bit of storage in this unit on each side. Um, if you pick the bed up, there's storage underneath. And you can put kind of suitcase and stuff under there. And then outside, on each end of the camper, there's a door. So you can slide kind of underneath this main part here. You could put your bigger items that you're not going to need while you're in here sleeping. Um, in the bedroom here, there's an on and off switch that controls your light here. Um, there's a light underneath the bed. You have to manually push that one. Um, and I believe that's it. Um, for the basic walkthrough, that's what I'll do with you if, if you're familiar with the unit. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. But I know when I'm out there, sometimes people will buy a camper from like an individual and they didn't get a walkthrough. So this will also help people with a walkthrough. So we have five other units um, that we'll do a walkthrough with. Um, they're all different. So just let me know if you like this. Thank you.